I bought this 1978 Corvette Stingray for dirt cheap and barely running. Two episodes ago, I pulled out the original engine and installed a 4.8 liter truck LS motor and it did not fit. So today, I'm gonna cut, grind, and modify anything I have to until it does. So the very first thing I wanna work on today is the alternator bracket. This is the one place where the hood hits the engine, so I'll need to figure out a way to lower this. You know, one option, of course, is to use some sort of aftermarket alternator relocator bracket, but it seems like every aftermarket thing that tries to mount one of these, uh, one of these belt driven items always ends up like wobbling and throwing the belts and they're just not very good. And I think I have a plan for this guy and this stock alternator bracket. Also, also of course, I, I don't wanna spend $300 on a chunk of aluminum that moves this off to the side a little bit because that's ridiculous. So <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try and modify the stock one. I have about an inch and a half of uh, room before the alternator hits the first mounting point of the engine, um, which I do wanna retain. So I'm gonna just go ahead and hack this thing off kind of like this and then hack off about an inch and a half. And uh, I can use these two or actually these three sort of lines to align the thing back to like a stock location. Uh, it's a little crazy, but uh, I did just buy an aluminum welding spool gun for my last project. So any excuse to use some of my toys, I'm always uh, happy for a little bit of uh, practice aluminum welding. So I think the first step is to measure out about an inch and a half and chop this guy off and then chop off the amount that I'm gonna bring it down. All right, I got a pretty solid section of this chopped off and I, uh, you know, it's relatively straight, I would say, pretty close. I, I struggled with this uh, hacksaw. It was kind of like all over the place, but you know, actually on this side, it actually lines up pretty good. Obviously I can clean up stuff like this and I don't know, <laughs> maybe I'll try and reinforce it with a little piece of aluminum if I have some. This side is gonna be a little bit more of a mystery. It's gonna have to go something like this I think I'm not sure so I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt these onto the alternator and I'm going to sit the alternator on here and just try and get it as nicely lined up as possible I'm also going to have to clean up this aluminum because one thing I know about aluminum welding is that it needs to be super super clean so I think I'll clean this up actually first we'll bolt these to the alternator and then we'll maybe throw some tack welds all right I got this thing I think pretty much laser straight on this on this guy kind of propped up I got a little trouble with the tabs over here. I'm gonna have to figure something out, maybe build like some little plates or something, but this side is lining up really pretty good. And I, I did shift it a little bit to the left so that, uh, so that I can have like a good spot to weld, like a beveled edge here to weld, but, uh, but it is lined up perfectly flat this way. And what's important is that it's lined up uh, forward to back and that it's not tilted any which direction. And as it stands now, pretty darn, laser straight on this thing. All right, check this out. I did a whole bunch of uh, welding and grinding and welding and grinding to kind of try and fill in some of these gaps, but this thing's looking pretty good. The most important thing is that, and this, uh, this pulley has a little bit taller lip, so you'll see that guy dead nuts right on. Uh, 
that was a lot of work, but I'm glad I did it. And you know, I fully welded this thing without even testing to make sure that the hood would fit, but I feel like it's going to. Let's, uh, let's give this guy a try. All right, there it is. It looks so much better low down too. It always kind of bothered me how high up the truck alternator sat. And actually it doesn't really seem like there's any angles where you can see my terrible welds. And uh, the fact that I smoothed this all out kind of hides the whole hackery. So I guess the real question is, does it fit? And it's way, way lower than it was before. And it's definitely lower than the intake manifold. So I think it's gonna fit, but there's only one way to find out. I think we're good. Let's see if we can get a peek up under here. Oh yeah, looks like we got plenty of room now. Awesome. So next thing I want to do really quick here is revalve my power steering pump. Because this came from a modern car and this is a very old car. So you need to reduce the pressure. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I've, I've toasted many, many power steering components. Usually I have to get real creative as to how to lower the pressure on these guys but supposedly this i think this is a uh saginaw style or something supposedly this thing is the key just a little shim and pressure should be reduced so i'm gonna pull this nut off of here and there should be something under there i need to shim and then we should be okay All right, I uh, got this thing apart finally. So I think the idea is to add as many shims on this thing as you need, according to what your power steering system needs. And I couldn't find a definite answer on the internet about the Corvette. The best I could figure is maybe around like 900 or so. So I think I'm gonna add four shims to make it 850 PSI. So I guess we just drop two three and four shims on this guy. I am guessing here, so I suppose if this ends up being a little bit too stiff, I can take a shim or two out, and if it's still too much pressure, I can put one more shim in there to get 700. I think this might be pretty good though. I kind of like a little bit stiffer steering feel anyway, so we'll try four for now. All right, so the next thing I wanna do here is to shave down this intake manifold um, as much as I possibly can, or at least make it as good as I possibly can. I've been kind of looking forward to this, actually. Uh, this thing is really, really an eyesore, and I don't think it'll ever not be an eyesore, but I think I can make it look a little bit better. All right, well, here's what we ended up with. Not too bad. It's kind of odd to see these like uh, sort of flat black lines, but definitely way, way better. And I don't know, if you kind of squint, it kind of looks OEM, I guess. Vast improvement anyway, so that's all I was kind of going for. Cool, all right, well, I got some, uh, I got some fresh gaskets on these guys. I think it's time to officially install the intake manifold. All right, next up is a bracket for my fuse block. And I'm gonna have to fabricate something custom. And I think I got a plan here. I think I'm gonna do something like this, mount it off of these holes here for this hood thing, hood holder. And the fuse block is gonna go right, right there. I mean, can't really do this one-handed, but you get the idea. It's gonna go right there. This thing's gonna kind of zigzag down and hold it just like that. And I just so happen to have a little bit of a old seat bracket here that I kept. So I think this thing is gonna be perfect. I'm gonna cut it just like that. We'll have a nice cross piece for this guy too. All right, let's get cutting.
All right, here's the final product. Actually looks pretty good. Got it fully boxed in and welded and fitting pretty good. I'm worried it's gonna be a little bit floppy. You can kind of see here. Obviously there's gonna be a little bit of flex. So I was thinking about putting like just a edge on this guy right here, just sort of like a lip to kind of stiffen it up. And then the last thing I wanna do is drill a couple of holes for these guys and then weld some nuts on the back of this thing. All right, here's the final piece. Got the uh, power junction block mounted down there. I got a spot for a second one right here so I can put another power junction block because I think I was gonna do one for battery power and for ignition power. I, I can't remember, but I think that was the plan. So I got that second one on there too. And I got this piece along the edge here just to keep it a little bit more rigid. Uh, whew, this was, <laughs> this took a while, but it's actually a pretty nice little piece. I'm uh, pretty happy about this. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the wire brush, probably some sandpaper to make it look as nice as possible. Um, it will always have this sort of fabricated look, I think no matter what I do, but that's okay. I like that. <laughs> and we'll uh, paint it and we'll get this guy installed. All right, I did a little bit of work here off camera. I've got both junction blocks here, so one for battery, one for ignition. Uh, I got this thing painted <laughs> and uh, I started putting in my relays here. And as you can see, I've got just a ton of wires going to this battery, but these are all feeding my uh, my fuses, which are feeding my relays. So I have ECU fused, I got a fuel pump, I got something else, <laughs> I'm not sure what it is, maybe my neutral safety switch. And then I have two radiator fans, which are again the uh, power the power is being relayed, of course, but it's being fused and plugged in directly to the battery. So I'm making sure not to overload any sort of like old wiring in here. So speaking of my fans, one of the things I need to finish wiring up here are the fan wires. And I don't remember if I talked about this yet, but I got some LS1 uh, F-Body Camaro fans here, which supposedly fit. I I hope they do, because um, the clearance gets a little tight over there by the A-arm, but I was told these would fit and the price was right on them, so I'm gonna go with those. And I also got some wiring pigtails, which have pretty small wires. I'm gonna try and, I'll do something to connect bigger wires to these, and then we'll go ahead and run uh, radiator fan wires all the way up here. Yeah, let's see about uh, unpinning these guys. All right, well, that was a failure. I, I think I made these a little bit too thick when I, I don't know, whatever, crimped them and did all that stuff, put the heat shrink on there. See if I can get this thing to focus. There you go. They're not fitting back into the connector. So yeah, I think I probably killed these plugs and I guess uh, back to the drawing board. All right, we got ourselves a couple of better quality fan uh, things, <laughs> these uh, fan connectors, and huge, huge, huge difference. There you go. I don't know if it's easy to tell on camera, but wire gauge is definitely a pretty big step up there. Thinking that this is something probably like 12 gauge, and then this is maybe 10. I don't know if it's eight, but it's probably 10 gauge, so a lot thicker wire, and just as important, it looks like we have pure copper here and this is like you know whatever that tinned copper aluminum whatever garbage so yeah uh if you happen to be doing the exact same thing uh go ahead and spring for the doorman don't try and save yourself like eight dollars like i did uh these guys are actually pretty darn good and i feel a lot more confident about that uh, amperage going through these wires than these junky ones here all right uh, so the next thing I think I want to work on today is getting the radiator mounted and uh, the cooling system set up with the fans and everything. And this is obviously not any sort of like stock fan. This is a fan from an LS1 Camaro, I think. And it is close to fitting. It's not terrible, <laughs> the, the fitment, but it's definitely a little bit on the narrow side. So we probably want to put some sort of I'm not sure, maybe a piece of angle iron or something like that, or angle aluminum, possibly if I have some. I think I can probably do some bolting onto these top bars because this is not part of the radiator's, you know, 
liquid cooling system. All right, we got a kind of a, a decent piece here. Let's see, do we got anything else? I think this is all steel or wood or plastic. I might have some up top. I gotta maybe check. I think I used this for my last radiator. Uh, I don't know, maybe we, maybe we got enough here. Do we got enough for two sides? Looks like these guys are right about 13 inches. Oh, 13 inches and 10 inches. So if we got 23 inches here, we might be, oh yeah. In fact, we got 23 inches of angle here. So uh, I could put a piece of angle here, a piece of angle here just to give it some rigidity, <laughs> rigidity. And I don't know, maybe we'll just put a top and a bottom over here. All right, we'll figure it out. All right, I do actually have a couple of pieces of, I guess, like sheet aluminum, some some scrap aluminum. But I think before I go too far down this road, I want to double check that everything fits with these fans. Because I do remember reading online that maybe these control arms here, especially this uh, left one, I think for some reason, might be a little bit questionable as to, as to how well they fit with these electric fans. So I think I'll try and get this thing sitting in there temporarily so I can, you know, like zip tie, make sure I get the right position of the fans. Okay, uh, well, not a perfect fit. <laughs> This is kind of what I was afraid of. It does seem to be hitting on both sides. So got a little bit of contact there, right there. And of course we got some over there too. But I think that there's an easy solution to this. When I'm looking at where, just where this thing's touching, it's actually, let's see if I can get a shot of this. Um, it's actually forward of where the fan blades themselves are. So, you know, this fan shroud sticks out about that much. So about one inch. I'm thinking I can just cut a notch out of that. I'll probably have to remove one of these little supports, uh, the fan motor supports, but I don't think that's gonna make too much of a difference. If I do that, I don't know if I'm going to need to do that side over there. I'm gonna start by cutting this side and we'll see if we need to do that one as well. All right, I got this notched out and sitting in here and it looks pretty good. The fan appears as though it's kind of like sitting high up. And as it stands now, this is actually kind of sitting right there on the top of this radiator on both sides. So I don't know, I, I think I might actually trim this just a little bit and on that side too, just to sit this down a hair more. Um, but I don't want to go too much more because we're, we're right up against the edge here on this uh, little notch here. So I'll have to trim this just a little bit more. And then <laughs> one more place that I have to trim is right here because this part right here is actually hitting the sway bar. <laughs> so, but this will be easy to, to trim out just a little bit. All right, we got this thing sitting in here absolutely perfectly. I got plenty of clearance over here, or at least enough clearance, we'll say. <laughs> Definitely enough clearance. And I got this thing resting right on here, and, and I did drop it down probably like half an inch. So we're now for sure, for sure, using all of the fan in there, if you can see it. And clearance over there is just fine. But I think the best part about this whole, this whole thing is that down here, we got this thing sitting like flush along the edge. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, that's sitting flush and it's gonna be like perfectly, perfectly sealed down here. So what I think I'm gonna do is probably put that angle aluminum right along this edge right here so that I can brace it off of here and it'll give it like a ledge to sit on. And then I can also throw in, you know, like a couple of bolts just to keep this thing right up against the radiator totally, totally sealed. Awesome. I'm excited. This is going to be the best custom radiator fan shroud I think I've ever made. Oh, uh, I'm excited to get to use my new toy here, which is a bandsaw. This should make cutting stuff like this way, way easier. I just clamp it in there. 
and let it do its magic. That was awesome. <laughs> I cannot believe I went this long in my life without buying one of these guys. I am gonna be using this thing a whole, whole lot. Well, uh, that wasn't ideal. I, I got the uh, blade stuck in the thing. That was kind of stupid and I hope I didn't ruin this blade. There is like kind of a kink in it right now. Well, let's give it a try. Maybe I'll try and straighten this out with some pliers, but kind of thinking I should probably get a new blade anyway. This one looks pretty old. So, this is looking pretty good. That's perfect. I figured trimming these guys down would be just a little bit cleaner. So let's get these kind of permanently mounted and then we'll get the fan going on here. Got the self tappers in there and this thing is kind of like a ledge that the fan sits on so and it's like perfectly sealed on here so i think the only other thing we need to do is to somehow get this to connect to the top here and i think i want to hit two birds with one stone as they say and use something like that so that it seals the top here and yeah i think that's gonna work perfectly and this is actually sort of coincidentally almost perfectly flat so Let's first, we'll go from that edge and then we'll mark it right there. In fact, I, I can put that in there and then that'll be my, yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking here. That, Try it right there. Crazy that keep like a piece of spare uh, metal like this, and mm -hmm. it's just exactly what I need. Dude, this is just too perfect. I like it. There's an alternate method. Probably holding it good enough, but let's see what it looks like on that one. Fancy. Yeah. Rave nuts. I've seen people do this twice. I don't know why. Mm. Did you do that? Yeah. Sweet. Done. Yeah. All right. This thing is looking super good. I, I put some rive nuts in here, which I'm very proud of. That was the very first time I've. <laughs> I've successfully used rib nuts and it's like, jeez, oh my God. Okay, <laughs> let's try that again. Uh, this thing is like perfectly sealed on here. I did have to kind of hand bend because I don't have any of these like fancy, uh, whatever you call those brakes, metal, metal bending brake things, but just look at that seal. 
on that guy. I think it looks good enough. <laughs> We're gonna call it good.